Today we talk about Rembrandt lighting. Rembrandt lighting is a classical lighting pattern used worldwide by a lot of photographers. And it's famously named after the famous painter, the Dutch famous painter, Rembrandt Hamenzoon van Rijn. You see, the name's quite long, so we just limit it to Rembrandt. Reason why it's called Rembrandt's lighting. Rembrandt's lighting is always characterized by the triangle created on the side of the subject you're shooting, on the cheek of the subject you're shooting, either side of the subject, relative to the positioning of your light source. So I'm going to start off with light placement. Right. When it comes to shooting with Rembrandt's lighting, the positioning of your light source is very important. With lighting placement, today I would want you to imagine a clock. Right? You have your 24 hour clock or the 12 hour clock. Put your subject in the middle. I mean, I learned this trick from a channel recently and I realized it's going to be helpful moving forward. Right in front of me right now, I'm looking at the camera directly. In the direction of the camera, that should be my six o'clock. Right behind me should be my 12 o'clock. To my left will be my three o'clock. To my right will be my nine o'clock. So from nine to six, we have what? Seven and eight. So when it comes to Rembrandt's lighting, you are always looking at your lighting positioned at eight o'clock. And Rembrandt's lighting is sort of a loop variation. With loop lighting, there's always shadow created on the other side of the, um, the subject you're shooting. The direction of the shadows from the nose is quite flashing. With Rembrandt's lighting, you're looking at a longer shadow to cut across that cheek to create that triangle you're looking for. If I move the light closer, looking at her 45 will be here, which is around 8 o'clock on the clock. So you're looking at me this way, right? Let's take an image set up for me. Don't rest your back on the, yeah. So take one like this, day two, one. This should be fine. You're not seeing quite the defined triangle yet, but if you take a look at the direction of the shadow on her nose, the shadow is not as long as I want it to be. So what I would do is to move the light further away from her. If this, if I open a wing span, yeah, I'll double the wingspan, so I'll move it in the same 8 o'clock direction and I'll double the wingspan to increase the shadow on her face. The length of the shadow, let me be exact. Okay, so straighten the face, turn the head this way, it's too much. Yeah, beautiful, keep it. So because I've increased the distance of the light source, I've lost an amount of light. I'm going to adjust by using my ISO and my f-stop take the same picture again and this time around you can compare the two well, let me take a step back so I'm going to use this instead you can compare the two images where you see how long the shadow then becomes turn a little bit to say too much finger back so the face to say, yeah. Let me reduce the eyes so. One thing you need to pay attention to is the lighting position. Your lighting position is quite important. The distance from your subject is also quite important, and the height of the light source is also quite important. Today's video, I had to increase the distance from my subject. And as much as we always say in, say, say all the time that to create soft lighting on the subject, the light has to be very close to your subject. With Rembrandt's lighting, you have to make sure the light source is further away from your subject to create a longer shadow from the nose bridge. That's what it's all about. Shadows are created when there's an increase in the distance from a light source. So the, the, the further away a light source is from whatever object you are shooting, the longer a shadow that's created. If the light source is closer, the shorter a shadow that's created. So that's 45 to her side, which is eight o'clock. Right. 
Send the face this way. Yeah. Stop smiling, please. Alright. See. You think? I take two one. One last time. Look here. So a zoom in towards her face, you get to see what I'm looking at. You also need to pay attention to the height and to the way the light is angled on your subject. So I'm going to angle it down a little bit then increase the height of the light source. Increase the distance also. What we are doing is currently fine tuning just so that we are able to get that Rembrandt look on her face. You know, this is easily achievable if you have a smaller modifier. With bigger modifiers like these, there's so much you can do to get what you're looking for. Turn the faces a little bit. Okay, three, two, one, one last time. The nose bridge is a factor when it comes to Rembrandt's lighting created on the cheek of the subject you're shooting. A longer nose bridge helps to create that triangle even faster. A shorter one becomes a struggle. I quite struggled today in today's video and Mind you, I had to do quite a lot of an adjustment to make sure I was able to portray the Rembrandt to you. But at the end of the day, because you have knowledge of it, you then know it's because of this, that's why something is not happening. While Rembrandt lighting traditionally involves a single key light source, photographers may require to use a fill to open up the shadows, which then in turn reduces the overall contrast that's seen with just one light. With such facial structures, the trick is to always eliminate light on the other side of the subject you're shooting because one, my studio is painted white, so the light is bouncing all around. That's also one factor. So what you can do is to introduce a fill, like I have done, which is a black fill, and add another light source. So I'm going to turn on Another light source I have in the studio, which is bounced off the wall to the back side of where the camera is. Right. So to have that fill of elimination with the black bounce card, then an introduction to opening the shadow with that of the light source. We all know Rembrandt's lighting only has one light within its setup because yes, the light has to come from one side and the triangle has to be created on the opposite side of where the light is and that other side has to have some dark shadows, some blacks just to see how that triangle stands out on its own. So I explored and I introduced the fill. What I did initially was introduce a bounce card and that bounce card opened up my shadows. I then turned it to negate the bounce of light and it darkened it up and immediately I did that I saw how dark the shadowy side was and I saw how visible my Rembrandt's lighting was on the other side of the subject I was shooting. To so show me your neck is quite longer or you can go under your chin. Either one works. Okay. Yeah, but don't tilt too much to the side. Yeah, and come back a little bit. Come, no, come back with the shoulder, uh, with the elbow. Yeah. Rembrandt's lighting has been seen to always create mood and depth on images, and this is as a result of light and shadow plays, because mostly you see Rembrandt's lighting being created with one light. I'm not saying it's limited to one light. I'm just saying mostly you see them being created with one light. So shadows and lights give a sense of 3D dimension to images. And I like the idea that using Rembrandt gives you that feel. And mostly we don't want our images looking 2D or flat. 
so using rembrandt and if this gives us depth in our image then why not why not make an effort to use such a lighting technique to enhance further your images whenever it is you're photographing oh interesting and drop the smile open your lips chin up chin down chin down try to look on me bring the face yeah chin up a little bit you're looking at me Ooh, i like this Just like that. Keep moving, keep moving. Give me, give me all you have to give me. Let me see that earring too. Put a earring on. Put a earring on this guy. What ear? And more or less mean for it. Leave this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I like this attitude. You know, in as much as we are trying to create Rembrandt lighting in today's video, let's not forget the technique used, which is feathering of light. I have mentioned this a lot of times in my previous videos. Make sure you check them out. Understand why I am so particular about feathering of light, which, you know, adds another depth to the image you're creating gives you even light source across the scene of the image you're trying to shoot creates very flashing lights on the subject you're shooting so keep that in mind when you're using rembrandt's lighting in the studio all right let's go you can yeah you can move your hands you can put it over your neck that kind of thing the light is this way here. Now you can turn so that I can see them. That's what you want to show me, right? Tip to your leg. Yes, put it there. Turn the face. Turn the look at me. Yeah. Don't chin up, chin down. Dance the head towards your right. Yeah, just like that. Okay. I mean, trim was a setup, but yeah, and more or less lean forward. Leave the scarf. Yeah, I like this attitude. Lean forward. Keep that. Rembrandt's lighting remains a timeless and widely appreciated portrait lighting technique used by various photographers because it introduces depth, it introduces mood. And you you kind of have an all-in-one package when you're using Rembrandt's lighting. And so far, so good. It has worked so well for all my dramatic portraits that I have been able to produce and share to you guys on my website and even on my Instagram page. So I would encourage anybody to, anybody who is new to Rembrandt's Light and watch the previous video, watch this upgraded version, combine the knowledge you get from the two of them and practice, practice, practice so that it becomes easy going whenever you pick it up and want to use it in the studio. It works, it will work and it's, it, it will forever work for whatever purpose you need Rembrandt's Light and for. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Make sure you subscribe, make sure you share, which is quite important for me. And I'll be glad if you check out my digital store. I sell products, digital products in Lightroom and Capture One and Photoshop. These will enhance the images you're, you're going to edit in the future when you get them. They are, they are videos provided for each and every product I'm selling. So it shows you step by step on how you can 
tweak it to your style and how it will work for you. I want this video to be sponsored by my shop, so I'm going to take off the obtrusive ads as usual. Support the channel by buying something from my digital store and I appreciate it. I'm sure these images from today's video are going to be edited by one of the products from my shop. So yeah, keep a lookout for that. Thank you so much again. Thank you so much for 10k subscribers. I didn't mention it in the previous videos. I've been overwhelmed lately with work and all that. But yeah, thank you. Thank you subscribers. We move. See you in the next one. Peace.